Hey YouTube! So whenever I'm playing with a modular synth or anything really, I, I want to just play with the knobs and experiment and do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not thinking about what I'm actually playing on the keyboard. And you can uh, sequence this a little bit with the arpeggiator. Uh, you know, just, just throw some random stuff in there and it's playing that, but that's going to get boring after a while. So instead, We've got all of these various modules sending all kinds of different signals. We can create our own sequencer using about five modules. We can cut out the middleman. Instead of me randomly hitting keys, we can use the synth to randomly send keys. So that's what we're gonna do. And even if you're not interested in making a synth that plays itself, I think that you will be interested in watching this just to learn all the various uh, ways that we can work with signals to do some unconventional things with modules. So let me make a random sequencer. And although I'm not gonna be using the keyboard at all on this, I am gonna throw in an amp to start off with and I'm gonna hook that up to the keyboard's uh, gate. That way I don't completely drive you guys mad with a constant tone. So let me do that real quick here. All right, so if we throw in a oscillator and we don't give it any sort of input at all, it's actually making a sound anyhow. You can hear that, right? You might not on some uh, laptops. You're definitely hearing that. So that's just the oscillator itself. It's always oscillating. It's always making that sound. And we can send anything at it to change that sound. And anything includes just noise, just like pure white noise here. Oh, it sounds like this. All right, that's what we got. And we can plug that in to our oscillator. And now we get, which isn't exactly a tone as such, but it, it is definitely an input that it's receiving and it's trying to do something with it. And since it is white noise, it's just all kinds of random and we need to tame that. And a great way to do that is with the sample and hold, which works kind of like a bit crusher's uh, sample rate selector. I'll plug this in so you can actually hear what that sounds like. So you hear that it's get kind of an interesting quality to that. And you can use that for all kinds of different effects and even drums and stuff. But if we take it way down, you hear that clicking? We're taking it from 22,000 samples to just four samples in a second. And if we take it all the way down, you hear, and we're just getting that pop every second. So let's try plugging this now into our oscillator. So you hear we're getting uh, several different tones out of that, and then a lot of this. And the reason for that is the waves have a plus and a minus side, a negative and a positive uh, to the waves. So if you look at any of these waveforms here, you'll see that uh, you know the upper end is positive, the lower end is negative in the peaks and troughs. So whenever we're sending a negative value to the uh, input that's expecting to have a, a whole lot of voltage, like it's actually expecting a tremendous amount of voltage. Uh, when we're sending something small at it or something that's uh, negative, it doesn't know what to do with that. And it's just going to spit out that. So we need to somehow figure out a way to, to kind of tame that and only send a positive value, or we can make use of the uh, oscillator here that has the FM mod, uh, which is going to use frequency modulation instead of the volt per octave to change the tone. So we've already got a basic tone. So let me turn that off again so you can hear what, this is just the oscillator, right? But if we slowly modulate that, we're getting a shifting tone just like we would with a, a regular sequencer. And you can 
do a whole lot of elaborate stuff with uh, the uh, amplifiers to try to push up the waveform and use an inverter and a crossfader to to actually get nothing but a positive white noise but you end up wasting a whole lot of spots up here so instead of doing that i'm going to show you how to use this with the frequency mod to put together a sequencer that's going to sound you know pretty damn good without wasting all your space and now that we've got our random tone generator we need a way to trigger the uh, gate on our VCA. And to do that, I'm going to throw in an LFO and a Boolean. And this Boolean thing is pretty interesting. It's actually trying to do logic. If it gets a positive signal here and a positive signal here, and it's set in the AND mode, so both of these are positive, it's it's going to spit out a 1, just like my keyboard is sending essentially a 1 when I give it full velocity. Now that's what we're going for here. But uh, there are other modes here, such as OR, where only one of these needs to be positive, or ZOR, which is NOR, uh, and neither of these should be positive, and then it'll spit out a 1, otherwise it's not sending anything. So with an LFO, we can use any shape really, but a square is particularly suitable to this. Whenever the LFO is on the positive, we're going to get a true statement for this if we set this to OR. And now we can use this as our gate. Now, this one has a tempo sync, so we can actually play around with the speed a lot. And all of this is BPM synced, so you can change the BPM in the settings. Uh, I happen to like the uh, 864ths, which works out to being 8th notes. So now we've got our random sound generator and our uh, not random but totally workable gate generator. Let's try to build from here a, a synth that makes use of these modules. So let's start off by uh, adding in a envelope generator. So we'll take our gate and plug that into here. All right, now we need a whole bunch more oscillators. I'm going to use a splitter to take our random tone generator and split it across all three of these. And now we need a mixer to take the input from all these. Or the output, I should say input it to the mixer. And I'm going to bring in each of these individually. So I think that's an easier way of working with things. So we already know this first one sounds like this. And this next one, I am going to pump up. Always remember to actually give it some FM so that it's actually going to use your tone. So already this is an awesome synth that's using just these few mods that we have up here. And we've got a lot of control over exactly how the tone is going into all these. Remember, 
we're just sending the signal through this thing, so we can shape that by saying... Oh, here, I'll... Well, that was not a very impressive demonstration. All right, so here it's just doing that basic tone. Du, 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 du. And you hear now we have a, a larger variety of tones. And we can do that for each of these, or we can even push it further by uh, throwing in a uh, amp to push that signal. With the premium voltage controlled uh, amplifier, we can overdrive it and that'll get us into some higher octaves and higher notes. See, we're still getting the lower notes, but we're also getting some higher notes in here now. And from here we can throw in a filter. And we've still got plenty of room for even more stuff. So let's throw in a delay and give it some stereo width. I'm going to do that by taking our amp and then running that into a splitter. So if we have one input here, that is going to go to both the left and right. But if we have something else in the other one, we get real stereo. And this uh, premium delay has a uh, chorus and uh, flanger or phaser or something like that. I really like this chorus though. I think that's adding a nice effect. But we have the ability now to shape exactly how much left and right we're giving it. So if you listen to that, it's got a lot of right. Awesome, right? And we've still got one slot left. Let's see, uh, we could throw in a slew. That's kind of fun. This uh, creates the, the sort of uh, glide effect you have on uh, other synths. So if we take our tone generator and plug this into the slew, we now have glide. That's kind of fun. Another uh, fun thing to play around with is actually adding a second uh, sample and hold. And I'm going to plug that in actually before all this. And we're going to use it now as, as an effect rather than as a signal shaper. We're actually using it as an audio shaper.
So now the synth plays itself and you can play around with it. It's a great way to just kind of explore sound and find different things that you like. And when you do find something that you like, you can just hit the circle up in the top right to uh, start recording or record this out into audio bus or whatever. But I hope this demonstrates that you can do all kinds of great stuff using signals in unconventional ways to get whatever result you can imagine. <laughs> 